Hey guys, so I wanted to give a little update. I don't know if it's considered an update, but so remember I read that uh, the quotes from that article that Wendy Wilson, Wade's adoptive sister, wrote to the court about Wade. And I was like, I don't know. I, I don't think they read it. I thought it was sealed. I never, I didn't remember hearing it. Well, they do read it. Kevin Shirley does read it during the penalty phase. The closing arguments during the penalty phase, he reads the letter from Wendy. I must have missed it when I was watching the trial because I did not remember that part. So shout out, Rhonda. Thank you for emailing me that. Yeah, so I'm going to play it for you. Here it is. Um, and I'm not certainly not going to read the whole thing. You've been very attentive and very patient with me, and I appreciate that. For many years, we held on to the hope that nurture would overcome genetics. He was a wonderful kid, kind to animals, kind to those smaller than himself and loving to his family. But there are many things in life that are out of our control, and it wasn't enough. Wade, like his birth mother, became a victim of his diseased mind. Know that he, is not, he did not choose this, not any of it. He fought hard against the genetic pull of mental illness and drug abuse. But the man before you is fallible, and he is human, and he lost that fight. As his family, we knew the happy and loving child that he was. The boy who wanted to spend time with his parents and sisters, the one who played sports and loved to read, that person would never do the things he has done. That boy is still in there somewhere, but is now overtaken by the monster of disease and addiction. We can't love him less because madness has taken him from us. Lock away the monster, but show mercy to the boy inside who didn't choose this path. Know that boy is still in there somewhere, and he is still loved. Lock away the monster. Okay, so here's another interesting part that I must have missed the first time watching the trial. Um, so Kevin is given his closing arguments for the penalty phase, and he talks about, well, first of all, I'm going to play the first part where he talks about Wade in October compared to now and the tattoos, and he's basically his point he's trying to say is like, not a normal person wouldn't do that. Who does that to their face? But then he talks about, I guess, when he was younger, he stapled his shirt to himself, which I don't remember hearing that. Man, it's crazy how much you miss. If like you could even because I've watched this trial a few times. Well, probably two full times, I would say. But it's crazy how much stuff you could miss, you know. Like, for instance, when I re-listen to like those jail calls with you guys, it's like, oh my gosh, I pick up so many more things that I missed the first time. But anyway, just wanted to play it. Do you guys remember? Let me put in the comments if you remember. Him talking about him stapling him, like basically stapling his shirt to his skin is what it sounds like he did. So, so he's just trying to basically, this is after he's already been convicted. His lawyer is basically trying to get the jury to not vote the death penalty to show like, okay, he's not right in the head. He's, um, his, his brain is sick. He's, you know, it's like he has a disorder, diseased brain or whatever, however you want to look at it. But that's what his lawyers are trying to fight for because, they're not denying that he killed them. They're just trying to get them not to put him to death. All right, here you go. And side note for you guys commenting, I'm not dismissing how serious mental illness is and how big of a part that can play in people's actions. When I say however you want to look at it is people sometimes view things from a different perspective, different backgrounds where they're maybe use different words, different terminologies or kind of see it through like their scope of experiences you know what I'm saying so I have a wider variety of viewers so that's why I kind of maybe it seems like I'm dismissing it but I'm just trying to be open-minded and just saying like however you guys want to see it you know what I'm saying like I'm, I'm trying to be accepting of people's different opinions and stuff you know of course I have my opinion but so I'm not gonna pretend that I know because I'm he's not my patient and I'm not qualified so not dismissing anything. If anybody actually has been following me, they know like I never dismiss like a psychological point of view. <laughs> I get crap for like bringing that kind of stuff up. Like you're making excuses. It's like, no, I'm trying to understand. So that stuff is really important to me. That's what's interest 
interests me. I have my my backgrounds in psychology. I have my degree in psychology. It's what drew me into true crime. So like, yeah, of course I know how important it is. I never dismiss that. So anyway, all right, let me play it. He kills a woman. He leaves her in her home because it's getting too light outside. So then he goes to see his girlfriend. And he attacks his girlfriend in broad daylight in front of a bunch of witnesses. Then he leaves. And it's still broad daylight, and he goes riding down a road and picks up Miss Ruiz and later kills her. Does that make any sense? You know what else doesn't make any sense? That's Wade Wilson in October. That's Wade Wilson now. Who in their right mind does that to themselves? He's not in his right mind all the time. And it's worse when you throw drugs on top of it. When he was a little boy, what did he do? They found him wearing a long sleeve shirt with the shirt stapled to his arms. This isn't something that just occurred overnight. This is something that's been growing in Wade Wilson for a long, long time. Okay, I just want to play this TikTok. I can't remember who did this. Shoot. Because I have it downloaded. But somebody made this TikTok where they found a part in the court um, where the lawyer, um, his other lawyer, not Shirley, but the other one, <laughs> looks at Wade. And it's like he's seen his tattoos on his face. And he makes the funniest face. So I thought that'd be appropriate to show now, considering what Shirley just said about, look at him in October. Now look at his face face now look at him now here he's talking about his face tattoos and he's like that's not normal like a normal person wouldn't do that or whatever he just said um <laughs> so it's just to show like what the <laughs> his other lawyer his reaction when he's actually like up close and like seeing <laughs> his tattoos i don't know why this cracks me up so much oh my gosh oh Anyway, all right, guys, have a good night. It's too late now to turn around and back.